Okay, so in this session, we're going to have a look at brush presets. So first things first, I'm going to make a new layer because I don't want to do anything into that background. I'm going to get a, just a standard brush, um, let's say 50. Let's make it a bit bigger, actually, now. Let's come to the top. Hard round brush, there we go. Get rid of this. Something like that. There we go. It's quite nice. Normal. Uh, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the brush preset. So this is where we normally go in here. Um, let's just make that a bit smaller. I don't know why it's coming out so big. Yeah, that's better. Now, next to it, you've got a folder with a brush on there. Give that a click, and you'll have something like this. So we've got a whole list of things in here, and this is how we really modify our brushes. This is probably the stuff that you guys are able to see, um, the icons. So again, if I get that star one, it's a bit of a weird one, but if I go super big, just click once, you've got that, and then you've got a trail of stars. But again, those are the kind of icons that you guys have been seeing over there. Um, let's just get rid of that layer and make a new one. Okay, so I just want to select a normal brush again to start with. Um, something like, yeah, that's fine. Cool. Um, so, first of all, if we go into brush tip shape, which is this one at the top, um, then we've got space in, first of all. So if we take this up and click and drag, and we've got this, which is interesting. It's basically the spacing of all the blotches. If we go like that, then we've got something that's quite bumpy. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through each one and the kind of different effects you can get. Um, as this one's very spaced apart. Um, you know, this is this is essentially just spacing, okay? That's pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to turn that all the way down so we've got a nice smooth line. Um, then you've got hardness again. You've already seen that one. So then if we take the hardness all the way down and move the spacing up, again, get something different again. Quite nice. Then your size. Okay, and you, you know all this anyway. So let's turn the spacing down, hardness up. Yeah, I'm going to make a new layer and turn this one off. Okay, next is shape dynamics. So in here we've got something called size jitter. So obviously all those blotches you saw back then, you've got a little preview about what it's going to do down here. All those dots you saw in the last one where it's all spacing, a stroke is made out of all these dots and you can jitter the size of them. So if we go now, it gives it a little bumpy feel, okay? Um, but if we come back and make that spacing bigger, you can kind of see what's going on. All of the different dots are coming out different sizes, but they're just all crammed together here. So let's turn the spacing down, and this is kind of what we got, okay? Just a little jittery edge, really. So come back into Shape Dynamics. You've got a minimum diameter as well. You can play around with that one, but I just leave that normally. And roundness jitter as well. So again, if I come back into Spacing just to show you what's going on, Roundness jitter, essentially, it randomizes the roundness of each of the blotches. So some of them are going to be oval, and some of them are going to be more circular than others. So that's essentially what that one's doing. If we turn the spacing back down, we get some, a weirder kind of shape like this one. Okay, and it just gives it more of a jittery edge again. Maybe we'll bring the spacing up a touch. Yeah, something like that. A bit weird. Okay, so that's shape dynamics. Then within scattering, we've got this scatter, so it scatters the blotches. So again, let's make a new layer and turn this one off. Got more options in here. Oh, look, scatters them. So you don't really need this spacing to be all the way up there if you don't want to. We can have it completely together, but then turn off the scatter. Or maybe just a little bit, maybe 11%, and then we've got this sort of scatter. Can sort of paint a blood sort of spatter like that maybe. Let's come back into scattering. You've got count the amount, which is the amount that's there, and count jitter is the amount that's done each time. And uh, I don't really use that really. Just use the count. Um, you can have a look through texture and deal brush, but the next one I'm going to show you is let's get a new layer again. It is color dynamics. Now obviously I'm I'm whizzing through these quite a bit, um, but you can take your time and play around with them. Now so far we've got this. Even though I've turned color dynamics on, you need to turn hue jitter up and see what happens. Each stroke is now going to be a different hue. Hue, each time you um, click and drag, sorry. Hue essentially means color. So I've turned the hue jitter all the way up, so it's completely randomized the color. Now, I can do the same with the saturation. There'll be different saturations, which is like strength of color. 
Um, so you can see, obviously, this, this blue one here is quite desaturated, and this purple one's very saturated. And you've also got brightness as well, which is essentially darkness. So it's just jittering them, which jitter just means rand randomizing. Um, if I click Apply Per Tip, so let's turn this off and make a new layer again. If I click Apply Per Tip, that's going to be per splodge. So if I click and drag now, they're all completely different hues, brightnesses, and saturations. But I'm just going to go for the hue, so I'm going to turn the brightness and saturation down. Make a new layer again. And it's just different colours now. Okay, so that Apply Per Tip is the one, otherwise it just does it per each time you kind of click and drag. But Apply Per Tip, completely different colours. And you can come back and you can turn this um, spacing down and the scattering down if you want to. <clears throat> so scatter, no scatter, shape dynamics, let's turn this roundness jitter down just so we've got a normal, a normal stroke and let's see what it does this time. Kind of looks like basically a load of dots kind of smidge together, doesn't it? When you've got that, but um, yeah, if you turn in colour dynamics, apply per tip off, you just got basically it's just going to give you a different colour stroke each time. But this apply per tip does it per each splodge, which is pretty interesting, a bit weird. Um, kind of looks like a sort of 3D snake in a way. Um, but yeah, those are the three I wanted to show you. You've got smoothing as well, which you can turn it on and just kind of smooth your strokes. But I don't, I, I, don't, I, I never use that. Basically, these three colour dynamics, scattering, shape dynamics I use. You can have a play around with the texture, see what it does, go for it. But um, I, don't, I, bar I barely use that anyway, so I'm going to turn it off. <clears throat> Not worth going into, I don't think they are. Anyway, that's me showing you the brush presets and how you can like modify them. If I turn all of my layers back on, we'll see all of the stuff we've played around with. And again, you can see why it's just easier just to use different layers. You can turn different stuff on and off, as I've already said. Maybe I want this at the top. Boom, there it is. Anyway, I'm going to see you in the next lesson where I'll show you how to load in different brush presets um, and then the lesson after I'm going to set you a task so cheers for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one